universe. <laughs> what a concept. It, it's a little bit like a leaf. It's not a bowl. The universe is beautiful. Something like a new woman that I was gonna date. Every city is built on stories that add to its unique flavor. My name is Adam Voss. I'm a traveler, an entertainer, and a marketing geek on the hunt for these stories. I only have 12 minutes to tell each one. This is 12 for 12 Atlanta. Warning swimmers. We've got some potential violence. Strong language. No kids in the pool. All kids under 17 out for adult swim. Created in 2001 by Mike Lazo, Adult Swim is the strange and nocturnal sister of Cartoon Network. Programmed by William Street Production, a subsidiary of Turner Broadcasting, Adult Swim operates nightly from 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. A fan of all things risque, I decided to check out Adult Swim's Midtown offices to meet with some of the creative minds behind their brilliant and bizarre creations. Adult Swim as a block is more than the individual shows. It's a big environment. It's something that you turn on and leave on. The whole is greater maybe than the sum of its parts, so the smaller parts become part of a bigger, weirder whole. <laughs> With everything we're doing, try to do something cool and interesting, and that approach has worked really well for us because no one else does anything like that. I mean, not in the realm of television. Adult Swim. We don't write the rules. We wrong the rules. Every attempt that we have at Adult Swim is to do something unusual and surprising, and very often that's what makes it funny. And I think that that has always been the appeal of Adult Swim. The stuff that we do does not necessarily behave like shows are supposed to behave. Can I call you Jack A, like from 227? Uh, yeah. Jack! <laughs> what did he say? Yeah, how about these prices? One, two, three, four. I came to work here October 93 with a little minuscule budget and a 13-week contract. You know, back in those early days of Cartoon Network, Ted Turner was still around running the company, and he was in no mood to make new shows. If I just bought 5,000 cartoons, we'd run those. So we had these guys who were working for Cartoon Network who were taking an old Hanna-Barbera cartoon and repurposing it to make this strange, weird talk show idea. Space goes coast to coast. Face it, space ghost! No! You're a spaceman that choked on a muffin! That, sir, is impossible because I am allergic to muffins! Oh, I'm sorry. Most of the shows that we make here are produced by people who work here. It's been a successful model for us so far. I started in 1995 as a PA on Space Ghost Coast to Coast. That was the first seed of Adult Swim. So you guys started making shows like Space Ghost in-house. We started building up. Matt and Dave were working That's on great. Space Ghost, and they had this idea that this Happy Meal would come be guests on Space Ghost. Yes, silence is golden. Like my delicious golden fries. They come with a kid's baffler meal. Baffle yourself with flavor. Okay, we heard you. How is that pitching Aqua Teen to Mike? Terrible. I mean, we basically had drawings on cocktail napkins. And I remember the moment when we lost the room and like six heads all went down to blackberries all at once. But to his credit, he came out and was like, I'm kind of iffy on this idea, but I'll let you make a pilot. My Friedar is picking up an unusual scent off Carl's car. It is the scent of jealousy. It smells to me like perfume. A lot of Belt Swim is the celebration of the lo-fi. Because we couldn't afford the hi-fi. <laughs> I mean, it's not really a celebration. I mean, it's more like, look, <laughs> this is your birthday, son. You know, you can either have cake or the noisemaker. You can't have both. You better have fun with it. The cost of diesel's drying up the trucker money. Yeah, it's a race to the bottom. We wrote an episode of Space Ghost where he encounters Satan. And we were like, we can't afford to animate Satan. So we painted Yogi Bear red and gave him a crown of human femurs. Space Ghost, say hey to Satan. Hello. Come closer to me. <laughs> we sort of figured out how to do it with the help of a lot of great editors and animators.
After the success of their initial block, Adult Swim continued their non-traditional approach by taking chances on new creators. The creators at Adult Swim are given more creative freedom than, I would say, any other network. Here, the best ideas sort of tend to win out, but we don't have to do it for a whole room of other people. It doesn't get focus tests. The creator is engaged, and they're not just engaged with the show, but they're engaged with how people talk about the show, how the show is presented. I'm looking at how much money they're raking in, Morty. This could be our next big business, Morty. Jeez, Rick, I, 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 hope, I hope you're not implying or, or, or insinuating. Shut up, stop, no. What is the, uh, the riskiest thing you guys have ever done? I think for me, we did an episode where, due to a clerical error, Gary is supposed to be an angel. Can I gouge his eyes out one more time? I'm afraid not. But unbeknownst to him, there are shrunken versions of his demon friends up his ass that are gonna take photographs and spy on heaven. And we show his ass and the demon's coming out and arguing with him. We hacked into St. Peter's book to get you up here so I could spy on their whole operation. God loves me and his love is as pure and as white as Gwyneth Paltrow's belly button. I'm amazed still that they let us do that. That's something we can do now on cable. There are people who are Adult Swim fans. Yeah. They just like the fact that there is a similar point of view in every aspect of what we're doing that feels like a human being with something to say at the other end of it. They feel like we get them and they get us. What is my purpose? You pass butter. Oh my god. Yeah, welcome to the club, pal. Adult Swim fans go all out when it comes to showing the love. It really hit when you start seeing people with tattoos of your characters. There's an affection for Adult Swim as a thing. And I think a lot of it is to do with the bumps and, and just all the stuff you wouldn't see anywhere else. Like rainbow-colored marshmallows, bumps are delightful treats sprinkled in with the commercials. We reach out to young and up-and-coming animators, animators who are really well-known, and we basically go to them and say, you have anywhere between 10 seconds and 60 seconds to create a animated ID. And it has to say at the end, Adult Swim. But other than that, it can be whatever you want. It's just a way of using the space that's normally used for what I view as landfill media. Yeah. So what we try to do is use that time to do something interesting instead that is not a commercial necessarily. The power of the bump is a way for the network to communicate very directly and very clearly with their audience and to establish a community. I don't know where else you've seen a network communicate directly like that. We've tried to take that spirit, I guess, and expand it with the interactivity of the streams. We stream probably uh, almost 40 hours a week of uh, live content. What do flowers taste like by Sally Skinner? No. It's bitter. Is it gross? It's bitter and angry. Listen, Jonathan, taste this leaf. Could... The streams are a place where we can try stuff out. It's a safe space to do things that can go very wrong. Go forth! And kill! Oh, whoa. shit! Whoa, whoa. Get up, little buddy! The live streaming shows all began with Fish Center Live. When you started doing this, did you think it would have this, this amount of success or just connection to your fans? When we started it, we had a fish tank, and we were talked over the fish, and we'd said there was the blue one. So, no. But the second or third day of Fish Center, I put up the phone number, and my phone started ringing. We knew we had something when people could call Adult Swim and ask them a question about what kind of fish is that. And the weirdest thing happened, months later, one of the fish died. It was legitimately sad. And it was like really emotional for like the viewers, the people in the room, and now we have a grave outside. No one ever thought that there would be sort of, you know, pathos and sadness of an Adult Swim show, you know? From the shows, to the music, to the packaging, to what we do out in the world, it's all an effort to do things slightly differently than the expected way. Yeah, I'd like to order one large person with extra people, please. White people. No, 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 no. Black people and Hispanic on half. When we started Adult Swim, we felt good about what we were doing, but I don't think corporate did. I thought they said, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll give them just enough rope to hang themselves. But instead, you built a huge fan base. So we built a fan base. We built a market where there wasn't one. I don't think that there's another place that communicates as clearly with their audience and is as open 
and transparent as, as this place is. Today at Adult Swim, I'm totally blown away. Unlike any other network, this is a two-way street. Adult Swim is a symbiotic relationship between the fans and the creators. All swimming together. Some of them going in the deep end, but that's okay. It makes everything possible. Great job. <laughs> is that what you guys that. are 12 minutes? Yeah. yeah 12 You're minutes. one minute too long. <laughs> Primarily children watch cartoons, but 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 adults watch cartoons too. In fact, in the evening, on the average evening, more people, more adults are tuned to the Cartoon Network than are tuned to CNN. It's amazing. Sad.